Hello and welcome to another video with the Bearded Tech Guy. In this video, we will be going over how to update the software and maps Kia vehicles, such as the Telluride, for free. This procedure can be used in other Kia vehicles, such as the Sportage, Stinger, and several others. I will include links in the description below for how to verify if your vehicle is able to be updated in this manner. Also take note that I can only verify that this works for vehicles in North America. To get started, navigate to mapandsoft.com and select Kia. If this is your first time to the site, you will need to create a free account, otherwise log in. Next select which country you purchased the vehicle from, the model year, and the model. Once entered, click on search. The next page will provide information on the latest update available, including a new features guide. You are able to buy the update media for $25 USD plus shipping if you want to do so, but for this video we are going to just download it for free. If you do decide to purchase the media instead of downloading it, you can still follow along with the second half of this video to install the update files. Now select the checkbox next to download and click on the red button. On the new page that opens, download the Navigator Updater for either Windows or Mac depending on your operating system. Once downloaded, go through the installation process for the Navigation Updater software. After this software is installed, open it and select Guest Login. On the next page, click on OK, and then select your vehicle, which for me will be the Telluride. Next select the model, which for me will be 2020, and then click on OK. Click on Start to begin the download process for the update files. On the new page that opens, verify the location for the file download and click on OK, and the download will begin. Depending on the size of the update and your internet connection, it can take several minutes. While you wait, you can take a look at the new features included in the update. Once the download is complete, you will be presented with the completion page. Click on OK. If you haven't done so already, plug in your USB drive. This next step will erase all data on the USB drive, so make sure you have everything off of it that you care about. When ready, click on Copy to USB. On the next screen, select the drive you want to install on and click on Start. You will get a warning letting you know all the data on the drive is about to be erased. As long as you are good with this, click on Yes and the file transfer will begin. Depending on the speed of your USB drive and other factors, this copying can take several minutes. When the files are done being transferred to the USB drive, the updater will display instructions on how to do the update. I recommend taking a look through each step and making any notes you feel you might need. Then click on OK and close the program. I recommend taking a look at the contents on your USB drive to make sure there are files that look similar to these. Once all set, you can safely eject the USB drive. Now it's time to do the update. If you decided to purchase the update media, the following steps can be followed from this point on. A few things I would like to note. It is strongly encouraged to have the engine running during the update. This is so that the battery doesn't drain, as the whole process can potentially take up to over an hour. Because of this recommendation, I would like to mention that you should not leave your car running inside an enclosed area and should either be outside or somewhere with adequate ventilation for the vehicle to be running. Also, because your vehicle will be running, I strongly encourage you to stay with it at all times during the software update. It is also stated that Bluetooth should be off on your phone. I assume having a device attempting to connect to it over Bluetooth during the update can cause issues, so make sure any device that is paired with your vehicle has Bluetooth disabled. One last thing to note is that practically all features on the radio head unit will not function during the update process. So if you plan to hang out in your car during the update, bring along some other form of entertainment. To start the update, hop into your car and turn it on. Then press the setup button to get into the menu and navigate to general. From there select system info and then software info update. Under Software Information, you can see the current map version, with the first six numbers indicating the version currently installed. Next, insert your USB drive with the software update files. On the Telluride, that will be the USB port that's labeled USB and is also used for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, not the USB port next to it. A pop-up will appear on the screen asking if you want to update. Select Yes to continue. You will then be presented with an option of which type of update you want to do. Make sure Quick Update is selected, and then click on OK. Finally, click on Update to start the update process. The update will then go through and update several components. During this time, make sure that the ignition is not turned off and that the USB drive is not touched during the upgrade procedure. Doing so could cause data loss. 
You will see several screens going through the different components being updated. When it's finally over, you will see a success message where you can click on OK. Depending on how many releases there are between your old software and the one you just installed, your menu may look different than what you're used to. A feature I'm really excited for is the ability to have split screen with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. In Tellurides with bigger screens, the Android Auto function only takes up two thirds of the screen, which is a pretty big bummer. Now with this update, the last third can be used as a quick display for different widgets outside of Android Auto. I would prefer either having the whole screen used for Android Auto or Android widgets instead, but this is at least a step in the right direction. To enable this feature, go into the menu and select Device Connections. From here, you can select Android Auto or Apple CarPlay to access the settings. In the settings for both, you will have the option to enable split screen. Simply select the split screen setting. Both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay have the same setting requirement if you want to use split screen for them. With split screen set up for Android Auto, let's test it out. With Android Auto open, you'll notice a little slide arrow on the right hand side. Clicking it will open the widgets. From here you can scroll through and interact with the different widget options available. Another new feature I find interesting is the sounds of nature. This is more or less different types of ambient noise that can be played from your car. There are several different sound options to listen to, which is nice if you are looking for some kind of noise but don't want to listen to music or any type of talk show. And with that we have successfully updated the informant software and maps on our vehicle without having to pay a dealer an overpriced fee for the cost of a cheap USB drive. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up as it helps out the channel immensely. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to be one of the first to know when I release a new video. Thank you for watching.